Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, January 11th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Indiana game is in 234 days, the game against Michigan in 318 days. A few quick notes before we get started. Left tackle Paris Johnson announced on Monday he is foregoing the rest of his eligibility. Declaring for the NFL draft, not a real big surprise, but certainly will be a, a hole that Ohio State has to fill in the 2023 season. A couple pieces of good news for the Buckeyes. Tight end Cade Stover is coming back for 2023. So is Xavier Johnson. We're probably going to have a show, let's be honest, talking about all, where all things stand with all of these guys. When we have a more full accounting of things in the coming week or so, NFL draft deadline is next Monday, January 16th. The current window to the transfer portal closes on January 18th. So that's all coming in the next week. So don't worry. Don't worry. We'll have lots more football. We know. We know you guys want to talk football. We will have more football. But however, the main topic of today's show, this is an episode I think I, I feel like I've said like eight times, like we need to do... You need to do a, a women's basketball show because they are real, real good. And, you know, football season is kind of all encompassing around here. So when things just start to wrap up for the season, we finally can actually start diving into some of the other sports of note on campus. And women's basketball, Kevin McGuff's team off to the best start in program history. They are 17 and 0, ranked third in the nation, just pulled off an incredible comeback win over Illinois at home on Sunday. Matt Goldman was calling that game on Sunday for BTN Plus. He's my guest this morning, Matt. How crazy was that game against the Illini on Sunday? Absolutely wild, Tom. Just thinking from down 17 points at one point in the third quarter to coming all the way back in defeating Illinois soundly in that second half was just so impressive. But it really didn't surprise me with the way Ohio State's played all year and what they've been able to put together as the third best team in America. Yeah, and they've had a, they've had more than a couple of close calls. They had one against... Uh, USF back in uh, December that, you know, just sort of following along, it was like, oh, this, they're going to, they're going to get got this time. And they, they pulled it out. They've just kind of found a way to do it. Uh, and, and it feels like we kind of need to do like a 101 level class on this team because I'm guessing a lot of people, a lot of Buckeye fans, the way it works is it's football season. And then once football season's over, everyone sort of picks up their head and goes, okay, what else is going on on campus right now? So just started starting to turn their attention to non football. So, Let's just run through some of the you know names to know, certainly, that people are going to need to know for uh, this year's team. Let's start with the reigning Big Ten Player of the Week, Taylor Mikesell. She is a player who really does a little bit of everything for the Buckeyes this year. No doubt about it. 31 points in that Illinois win in that comeback, and she was incredible from especially downtown. She was second in the NCAA last year in three-point percentage, and she's looking to get to that mark again or even better this season. So, when you have a player scoring 31 points and Taylor Mike Zell and able to knock down shots from, as you mentioned, a little bit of everywhere on the court, you're going to have a special player. And defensively, she's also been great forcing steals and turnovers with her teammate of Taylor Theory. They, they double on a lot of players at all times, and they really cause a lot of mismatches for uh, teams. And she was able to do it once again against Illinois. And you talked about the scares. They just had that scare against Minnesota the game prior. So Taylor was a little shaky in that game. She comes back and she does what Taylor Mikesell does best and shoots the lights out against Illinois. And, you know, when you have a third ranked in the country, best season, you know, best start in program history kind of season, it's like, wow, everything must be going perfectly for them this year. And no, no, in fact, it is not. What's really impressive is they've done a lot of this without two of their top players, Madison Green out for the year with a knee injury. And then JC Sheldon, a senior out of Dublin, she's played in just five games this season. The last time she played was in the ACC Big Ten Challenge against Louisville. She scored 22 points, obviously double figures every game she's played, obviously a key contributor to this team. You know, how big will it be? We don't know when she's coming back, but how big will it be whenever she does get back to be able to add her to this lineup too? It's crazy to think that Ohio State's gone to the level they're at right now without J.C. Shellen for this past month and a couple weeks, just due to the fact that J.C. was the top defensive player in the Big Ten last year. And she was able to average around 20 points per game. So when you put those two points together, you have a really good basketball player. And now she's able to add to this group for Ohio State and cause more issues for defenses when they're already having to guard Taylor Mikesell very tight from a three-point perspective. Now you have JC who can drive the ball better than anybody in the Big Ten, I'd argue. And also she can shoot well from the outside. It's going to be very fun to watch this Ohio State team and the way they function once JC gets back. And I have to assume it's going to be within the next week, just because of the fact Ohio State has Iowa and Indiana back to back coming up. And she will be a key if they want to beat both those teams. 
Yeah, it, it has been kind of vague. It just sort of said lower leg injury and week to week. So definitely something to keep an eye on. But yeah, when if and when she comes back, that is going to be a big, big shot in the arm for the team. Uh, one of the things that has sort of kept them afloat without her, well, better more than afloat, but uh, kept them kind of humming along, I guess, uh, without her is the incredible performance of uh, freshman Cody McMahon. She was named the Big Ten's Freshman of the Week four consecutive weeks. That is like the Big Ten Football Awards where, you know, Ohio State just wins wins that award, you know, whatever award every week. Cody McMahon is doing that for the women's basketball team uh, as the Big Ten Freshman of the Week, averaging close to 13 points, four boards a game. It just it feels like she has just sort of been just what they needed just at the right time. Yeah, Cody's been the biggest surprise, I would say, arguably in the Big Ten this year in the way she's come on. And you're correct. She came right in for JC, stepped into that role of more being a down low player because Ohio State really does lack size when it comes to some uh, teams they go against in the Big Ten. Rebecca Mikulashikov is the really only big player that's above 6'3 on the roster. So when you have Cody, who's around 6'2", but is so versatile and can shoot well and drive and finish in the lane, that really makes her such a great player. And Four times winning the Big Ten Freshman of the Week is such an incredible stat. And what Kevin McGuff told me, my crew, is that she is so key to this team and their success that he doesn't believe they would be even close to where they are without having Cody McMahon's presence. And I thought that was just, that really hit me when it came to my preparation of, wow, Cody's this important to this team. And her coach thinks that highly of her right away as a freshman. We don't hear a lot of freshmen talked about in that sense, even in football, basketball, or any sport. So when you have Cody having this impact, I think that is just so imperative to their success. Yeah. When you have a a senior go down, you need someone to step up. It is rare that a freshman can kind of just sort of step in and fill that hole. But uh, that has been definitely one of their keys to success. And I mean, you mentioned some of the games they've got coming up. They've got they're at Nebraska on Sunday, home for Northwestern on Thursday. Uh, That's Thursday, the 19th. Uh, Iowa on Monday, the 20th, uh, January 23rd. Uh, I'm sure even people who don't really follow women's basketball know Caitlin Clark. So that will be Caitlin Clark and Iowa coming in. And then the showdown with Indiana on Thursday, January 26th. And the Big Ten is really good this year. Ohio State third in the polls right now. Indiana is sixth, Maryland ninth, Iowa 12th, Michigan 17th, Illinois 24th. I mean, this this feels like the, this might be one of the deepest Big Ten seasons I can remember. I mean, this is... Is the Big Ten one of the top, you know, one of, if not the top leagues in in the nation right now? I would say so. I think they are the best conference because when you look at the top teams in the country, they're Stanford and South Carolina. Those are the two premier programs, but they're so top heavy in those conferences, unlike the Big Ten, where it's really deep from top to bottom. And for Ohio State, they have to go up against Iowa and Indiana back to back. That's going to be such a big test for Ohio State and to prove that they are the top of the Big Ten. And when you look at Caitlin Clark, you just mentioned, I, I say she's the best college basketball player right now. The, the way she just dominates the game is so impressive to watch and so fun. She can shoot from the logo. She can drive inside. She can dish it outside. She's so good at what she does. And I would say this is the deepest conference because even this Illinois team that Ohio State faced, they were the most receiving votes in the AP poll coming to that game. Now they're ranked 24th and they had been in Iowa the week prior. So Just showing the level of competition this Big Ten is really impressive. Minnesota, who was really kind of shaky in the Big Ten this year, gave Ohio State a scare prior to that Illinois game. And then you talked about there's Rutgers, there's Nebraska, there's Northwestern, who are pretty solid teams when you look at the NCAA net rankings. I believe there's eight out of of the 50 teams in the net rankings that just came out are Big Ten teams. So that's a pretty good statistic if (laughs) if anyone knows math. So that's pretty solid. So I, I would say the Big Ten is up there for maybe top one or two conference in America. And, you know, as far as this year's Ohio State team, they have a chance to do something that this program has not done in a long time. And this is one of these things where I saw it and I looked and I thought that can't be right. And I checked it on a different source and I said, "Eh, I mean, maybe that's right, but I'm going to ask Matt just to be sure. Okay, we, we know they made the Sweet 16 last year. They beat LSU and then fell to Texas in the Sweet 16 last year. So that was the third time Kevin McGuff has gotten the Sweet 16. Okay, all right. They made it three times under Jim Foster as well. They have not gotten to the Elite Eight since Katie Smith was on the team in 1993, the NCAA runner-up. That that seems impossible. That, that was 30 years ago, which also seems impossible. But, I mean, this feels like this team, as things are going right now, they have a legitimate shot to finally get to the Elite Eight and and maybe more and have one of the 
two, three best seasons in Ohio in program history. I think even back to the Kelsey Mitchell days a couple of years ago, and she she's like one of the top three point shooters ever in NCAA history. I thought that team was special. And now looking at this team, when JC eventually comes back, adding Taylor, Rebecca special, Taylor Theory, Cody McMahon, we all these players we just talked about, I think this team is bound for great success when it comes to the postseason. I don't know if they're going to win the Big Ten just because of the grudge match that they have to go against in their conference. But when they go play teams outside of their conference, I think that's where they're going to have an easier time just because of different type of competition that they're facing. When you don't when you don't have to face Caitlin Clark possibly in the NCAA postseason tournament, you're avoiding that at least for a couple rounds, and then you possibly have to go play them. So I really think this Ohio State team is a top eight team in America, and it's all about the way this team and how they're, they lack depth off the bench, I'll be honest. They only play two to three players off the bench. So when you don't have that many players coming off the bench and trying to play deep, that could cause some issues, but it hasn't so far for Ohio State. They're 17 0. They're just dominating right now the season. So I really think this Ohio State team has something special brewing in Columbus. I think a lot of fans need to start paying attention to this team. They beat Tennessee in their home opener this year, which was, I was on the call for the radio. That was fantastic. Tennessee was five in the country coming to that game. Ohio State. 14. So everyone assumed, oh, the Lady Vols, a dynasty in women's basketball. They're going to beat Ohio State in front of a nice home crowd that they had. Around 8,000 people in the shot. So you had the students come for an all-white game and they beat them pretty well. It was another comeback that they had in that game. They were down double digits in the first half. So that's been the story of this team this year. And I know that's not always a great story for a basketball team to always be down the first half and have to wait for them to come back. But that's the Ohio State team of 2022 and 2023. So this team is set up for success. Kevin McGuff's been able to get really close, as you said, but not close enough. This is the year where they get there. All right. And do you uh, do you know, I know you've called a whole bunch of games. You've called them for, for student radio. You've called them for BTN+. Plus. Do you know, do you have any other games coming up that uh, you know you're going to be calling? Yeah, I'll be calling that Ohio State-Iowa uh, game for women's basketball. And I, I made sure to... Uh, get on the schedule for that one because I can't miss watching Caitlin Clark in person and be able to um, be on the call with uh, my buddy Cole Emplett. We'll, we'll have a fun time on student radio because that's a national TV game as I just, I'd hope it would be in well, uh, Big Ten Plus. They don't have as many games for Ohio State now because they're getting better. So national TV wants to pick them up, which that's great for the team and the success, but hurts me a little bit because I love calling them on TV, but I'll be on the radio for a lot of games and I'll be traveling to Minneapolis for uh, the Big Ten tournament. So that should be exciting. And hopefully they get a top four seed like they did last year because I know that was really exciting to call. And they got so close and they almost beat Indiana. So I think this year is a year that not just they'll have success, but I'll have a little success on the broadcast side. Yeah, ca- calling on uh, BTN Plus as a student. Uh, yeah, you're doing you're doing just fine on the broadcast side right now, Matt. But uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time to run us through a little uh, little women's basketball. And uh, if you are interested in seeing the women in person, again, next home game is uh, Thursday the 19th against Northwestern, and then the big game against Caitlin Clark in Iowa on Monday, January 23rd. But uh, yes, those are those games are a lot of fun. You know, nice and easy, and uh, not not too expensive, and uh, pretty good, pretty good product this year. So you may want to go check one of those out. So, thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.